Hello and welcome back to part two. In the last part we had done the second pa second half of the game and now we are moving on to the first half of the game. Now we're moving on to the second half. What's wrong with me tonight, folks? Whee! A wise man would tell you to go and take the stopwatch and run. It's at the beginning right here I showed off. We are not doing that. We are sticking with the holy water for the rest of this run. A teabag right there just to assert my dominance. Never worry about that. Um, the skull graphics in this part of the game is particularly interesting. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for this platformer platform to come um but the skull graphics I, I always never was able to it's actually supposed to be like a skeleton kind of like leaning up against something i never thought about it like that i was it wasn't until a couple years back i was like oh that's interesting i mean here these are just regular um just skeleton bones up here at this section um, it's basically just all Fleeman. It is a straight shot. Um, the albatrosses drop the Fleeman. The Fleeman come at you. Just do what I'm doing here. Don't be afraid to improvise a little bit. Don't panic. Just kind of stay at one spot for a little bit right there. If you feel like you're getting overwhelmed with Fleeman. I'm stressing this a lot here. That it, that it seems like I'm being a bit serious, but it... The original Castlevania is a particularly rough game. First, I think our first like real encounter with a bone pillar. Um, their heads are the only things that you can damage, typically. There are some games where you can damage like their neck areas. Don't grab that dagger. I get the holy water right here. I take a pot shot there because I was just not ready for it. Get the triple shot. We never lose triple shot throughout this entire playthrough. How was that? How am I able to play like this? Years of practice. I just really, really, really practiced this game. Like months before this Let's Play ever happened. To have a deathless run. Spoiler alert, this is deathless. Grab that little heart right there in case you're in need of it. Um, here is Frankenstein's monster and Igor, which is basically just a Fleeman. Take another pot shot right there. I'm trying to get Igor out of the picture right here. I get Frankenstein in this really good spot. I was able to take out the projectile. I tee back to assert dominance again. And that is stage 12. Technically stage 4. But it's stage 12 in like the overall game. Because every time you go through a door, it changes stages. So now we're on stage 13 because it's technically the start of a new stage. But we're technically on stage 5. Here is the hardest part of the game, the torture chambers, or the dungeon. This is the second to last stage of the game. This game is not particularly long. This is why this part right here is going to be the final part. I tried throwing a holy water on the steps. I was thinking this was uh, Super Castlevania 4 for a second. I don't... I keep thinking all those little tricks still work in this game for some, for some reason. I mean, technically, I mean... Super 4 is technically a retelling of this game. I guess I should probably maybe explain my feelings towards like the retelling of events of 1895, I believe is when this game takes... Or 1795, I believe is when the first game takes place. Is that there's four different versions... Well, technically five. This version, the arcade version, the MSX version, the... Ca Devil's Castle Dracula on the X68000, or as the Americans call it, Castlevania Chronicles, and Super Castlevania 4. Uh, the X68000 game is, I guess, more of a faithful remake to this. It keeps some things from Super 4. And it, it definitely likes to fuck with veterans. It likes to fuck with people like me that had played the original to death. Um, in the first stage, you know, that if you remember that last little, that, like, first time I showed you the wall meat. Who the fuck eats nasty-ass wall meat? But that wall meat, it actually becomes an infinite uh, spawner for Fleeman. 
and it's actually on the other wall, and that's where the actual meat is in Chronicles. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of just how really, really fucking mean that version of the game is. The MSX game I've never played. Haunted Castle, I wouldn't wish Haunted Castle my worst enemies. That game is way too fucking hard. I'd say this game and like Super 4, I'd even tell you Super 4, I think even leans on the easy side a little bit. But generally speaking, I, I, I like Super 4 quite a bit. It's a very comfy ride. I like to play it every Halloween. Also, this game I also like to play every Halloween. Um, be careful of the axe armors, by the way. They take like nine hits. I should now let's get back to the actual stage here. But if you are playing the first revision of the American version of this, of the NES version, be very careful in this stage because there's like a some minuscule chance to crash. And I don't know why. It's not in the second revision of the NES version. It's not in any of the Japanese versions. So thank god I don't have to worry about it here since I'm playing on the Japanese... Well, the Japanese cart version. Not the disk system version, which has a safe feature and has loading times. <sighs> and I think we're actually getting up to... Yes, we are. We're getting up to the Hall Before Death. The Hall Before Death is probably the most... Maybe even the most infamous section of this game. Maybe of the whole series. It's really, really brutal. I'd probably tell you... Maybe in the whole Famicom's library, it might actually be the most brutal part of most games here. That wall meat right there is a godsend. Pick it up, yep. Here it is. I get a little ballsy here. You can tell I get a little scared here. There are, there, and this is the reason, well one of the reasons why I keep holy water throughout this whole rest of this game here. It's like this in the final boss, I generally have a very, very rough time beating without holy water. So I make it a point to try and keep it on as long as possible, at least to get past death. Death is incredibly aggressive in this game. Like his sickles do insane amounts of damage. My strategy here is literally just throw holy water at him and get into a rhythm. And he won't be able to do anything. He throws sickles at you, and he he just he just, and he flies all over the place. He will literally put you him in between you and the sickles, and it gets very very hairy very very fast. Although I have seen some cross strats with triple crosses, whereas then you basically you can get death into like a weird like death circle. Here we are at the final stage. Um, like I said before, this game is not particularly long. Um, be, don't even bother fighting these bats right here. These are the first bosses in the game. That's how far you've come, is that they're literally just normal enemies. I'm a big fan of this song, by the way. The last song, Hearts of Fire, was amazing. Um, Walking on the Edge for the stage before the Torture Chambers was also amazing. The whole soundtrack is just amazing. I think I've said it in part one. It's been a while since I've checked part one. But I'm fairly certain that I said this game has a fucking phenomenal soundtrack. One of the best 8-bit soundtracks. This room is a little scuffed right here. I don't... I hate it when I get my holy water stuck in the fucking ceiling. Like, I really hate it when that happens. Don't grab that dagger. That is a... That is a death sentence. There is a pot roast up there. Ah, I wouldn't recommend grabbing it. Unless you were like desperate, desperate, and are like in a speedrun or something. And maybe you're trying to save it. That maybe you took more damage than you needed to. This room right here is kind of hairy, hairy. Because it's like... Ooh. Here we are at Draculia. Um, th this one, I actually never take damage. So needless to say, the the stakes are high because one more hit and I'm dead. Don't go immediately to Draculia. 
you will not beat them with the amount of hearts that I have currently have. So you go back down, back up the stairs, all the candles respawn, you get the hearts. If you want to cross right there, then, I mean, be my guest. I wouldn't recommend it. It, it makes phase one easier, but... Against the demon, the second form, no. Oh no. Uh, but typical rule of thumb with Draculia, if you're not being incredibly ballsy like I am. Um, one hit against... Like, if you take more than one hit against first form Draculia, your chances against form two are up a rat's ass. It's it's not happening. As as DAVGN put it, you're 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 most certainly dead if you take more than two hits. I make sure to get a little over fifty hearts because I know I'm going to be just just you know. The power of Christ compels him for the entire second half. I think this is the last round of me doing it. I probably could have gotten away with doing it now. But I just, I wanted to make sure. Because I was on one hit point, I did not want to lose that holy water. So I'm like, well, I'll over-prepare a bit. Okay. Here's Draquia. Kind of looks... It's like an old man in this game. I don't. I can see what they're going for. I guess. Um, his one attack is Hellfire. It's just regular old Hellfire. There was no meteors yet. There was no fancy teleporting tricks. He just teleports. All he does is really aggressively teleport you, and these fireballs are really, really aggressive. Kind of get into a rhythm that I'm going here. And you should be fine. You should dodge it every time. Kind of try and fake him out with the fireballs. Be like, because if you jump, he'll shoot the fireballs up. But if you stay on the ground just long enough as he's about to shoot it out, you'll be okay. Have faith in you. You'll probably make it. Don't feel too bad about not being able to nick him on every time. Like nick him with the whip. Um, it's okay, his hitbox is a little weird in this game. I would say probably once we get to Legend of the Devil's Castle or Castlevania 3, the fight generally becomes a little more consistent because hitboxes in general had improved from 86 to like, I think it came out in 89 in Japan, 90 in America. Um, here's the final form by the way the, the as people have called it the cookie monster i don't i don't i don't i don't get it i probably should be whipping the head but i was not wanting to take any chances um he just jumps in this form it's not it's nothing too too terrible i do start whipping the head here give or take about Um, once you beat the game, you get a hard mode, but, you know, you just hold it out, and there you go. And, of course, we get into 1-Up right as the final boss happens, like it's finished and the game's done. And that's Castlevania 1. It's one of my personal favorites of, like, Classicvania. I don't think it's as good as, like, Super 4 or Chino Rondo or Nocturne in the Moonlight. But I think it's really, really, like, fundamentally it is solid. It is a really, really good game. For their first attempt at it, it's really good. Also, this was during the era where we couldn't exactly credit developers. So literally people would have to come... F people have come forward over the years to say, Hey, I worked on the first game. But we still don't have the full team, which is tragic. It's bittersweet. Love Chansey. Green Stranger. It's it's making fun of like stars that have played in like uh, Hammer Horror films and things of the sort. The player who played the greatest role in the story. Uh, that's very nice. 
But that's Castlevania, and take care. I was Cuc I'm Cuco Chad, and take care.